So, you want to know how to write procedural methods in C Sharp? This is Daniel, and you are going to get coded. As I said, we are going to implement procedurally all the top 10 C Sharp methods that you have seen in this video. Okay? If you haven't watched that video yet, please click on this link over here. And to reiterate again, you should not reinvent the wheel. These methods are built in C Sharp. But if you are curious, let's see them. And in this first video, I'm going to show you guys the index of. So how to implement procedurally index of. But before that, let's try to create a new console application. Here I have Visual Studio opened, file, new project, and let's create a new console app. And then index of and hit OK. While this is loading, let me explain uh, what we are going to write. So we have a fruits array, apple, cherry, pineapple, and plum. So four fruits in total. And we have an index variable. And this index variable is set to minus one. So um, this is the initial state of this index. We assume that there is no such item. Okay, so if the index remains minus one, it means that we have not found any item uh, inside of our array. And the item that we are looking for is cherry. So uh, the index should be one because uh, cherry has the index one is the second position. Apple zero, cherry one. And then we have a for loop. So we iterate using an i. I, get, uh, I is zero and until fruits.length. Here I have an if statement. So if the item, if that specific item that we are iterating over uh, is equal to the item that we are trying to find, then that's it. So we are going to save the index of that specific item in the index, and then we break. And let me explain what break does. So. Um, whenever you see break in a loop, because normally you see in loops, so in for loops, in while loops, in other loops, uh, it means that you break the execution of that specific loop. In our case, it doesn't make sense once we find an item, for example, uh, cherry, uh, we don't want to go uh, and iterate over the rest of the items until the end of the array. It just doesn't make sense. We have found it. If we find it, we can just break it. We save the index and we can just break uh, the execution. This will exit the for loop and we are going uh, to, um, to run um, the next statement. So exiting um, out of the for loop and then continuing on to display the index. So this is done. Windows key right arrow and let's try to type what we have. So var fruits equals new square brackets and apple cherry pineapple and plum so these four fruits and then we need an, uh, a local variable called index minus one and the initial as i said is minus one we start we assume by saying there is no such item so this is the default value and var item is cherry. So this is the item that we are trying to find in the fruits array. And then we need a for loop. So for tab tab, i, yes, uh, i less than fruits dot length, enter. And then if, if tab tab, fruits index i, so the current element equal item. So if the current element that we are looping over is the item, is the cherry, then we have found it. So index is i, so we assign uh, the value i to the index variable, so we save it, and then we break the for loop. We don't need to continue on because we have found it. And let's print out that index, so cw tab tab, and then index. And then just to see what we have in the console, we can say console.readkey. This will keep the console from not closing. And we can press F5 and let's see the actual result. 
and this is a little bit too small. Let me try to zoom in a little bit by changing the font size and we have one. Why we have one? As I said, apple has the index zero and cherry has the index one. And one small tip that I want to show you guys, let's try to stop the execution over here. Once you find the item you are looking for, you can stop the execution to make the algorithm more efficient, as I said here. So there's no need to go to the end of the array. There's no need to continue on. But let's put a breakpoint. If you don't know what the breakpoint is, um, well, first of all, we can put the breakpoint here on the gray area, over here on the gray column, and it will stop the execution at this specific statement or, or line. In our case, the initialization of the I. And let's try to press now F5. And I'm going to show you guys all the values that we get. So let's try to go to locals. If you don't have it opened, uh, please, please go to locals. And we are going to expand fruits as well. So fruits has uh, the fruits array has apple, cherry, pineapple, and plum. So these four fruits. And the index is minus one. So we start with the index minus one. Also, you can hover over these, these variables and you can see right now the index is minus one. If we hover over fruits, we have the same as you uh, saw in the locals, all these, all these values inside our fruits uh, array. Okay, so the I starts from zero. You can press F1, F11 uh, to continue or to step into your code. So F11, um, F11, so right now I is zero indeed, and we are trying to see this one. So the item is cherry, yes, and this is false because the first one is apple. So apple is not equal to uh, cherry, and we can see right now uh, the condition was false. So we continued on, we didn't, um, run the statement in the body of the if statement. So let's press F11. We are going to see that I gets incremented. So right now I is one. And we are going to check is I one less than four? Yes, it is. So F11, we are looping still because this condition is true. You can see true. Right now, the item is cherry. So cherry here, but here the I is one. So F11 and this returns true. So the item that we are iterating over right now, so fruits index I, which is cherry because I is one, was, tr was equal uh, to the item. So this returned true indeed. And then index will be one. So index will get the value one you can see here, so it, uh, uh, it got the value one, and then we are going to break. Once we um, run this, the break statement is going to break uh, through the for loop and is going to continue on the execution outside of the for, uh, of the for loop body. And it goes here. So we are going to print uh, to the console the index. So let me try to pull down the console so you can see the index. And let's try F11 again. And you can see one. And then F11, and this will wait for us to press any key, enter. And let's continue. Okay. So this is how you can find the index of an item. As I said, just to recap, you need an index set to minus one. So this is the initial, this is when we don't find anything. If we just say chair and try to run this F5, and I didn't want to uh, run this, so let's try to remove the breakpoint and continue. You are going to see that we have still minus one. So the index is not changed because there is no such item. There's no chair in our fruits array. So this is why the index remains minus one. Cool. So this is how you implement index serve in C sharp procedurally. If you liked it, uh, please smash that like button. Button also, 
uh, my goal right now is to have 1,000 subscribers. Uh, when I do that, on Fridays, I'm going to post Q&A videos uh, from the comments you post down below. So I advise you to write down your questions. Maybe they will end up in uh, those Q&A videos. Until next time, bye guys.